Hey guys, today we're going to be breaking down one of the most beloved and well-known classes and squads in all of Enlisted, the Engineer Squad. Now, the Engineer Squad is incredibly beloved in the Enlisted community with tons of memes like the Cult of the Hammer and the Chad Engineer memes popping up across the various discords and Reddit threads for Enlisted. But what exactly makes this squad so good? Well, today I'm going to be breaking that down. We're going to be talking about the various reasons why the Engineer Squad is so powerful and how you can use it to its utmost potential and efficiency. So guys, if you like these kinds of videos, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out. I do appreciate it. Uh, and remember, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash heyquadro and join a great community over on Discord. Those are welcome to anybody and everybody. Come hang out while I live stream and listen to other games like Hell Let Loose and generally have a good time. But enough of that. Let's jump into the engineer class, guys. Now, there are three main parts of the engineer class that makes it effective that we're going to be talking about in this video. Number one, it's deployables. Number two, it's weapons. And number three, it's perks. Now, all three of these are important and they're going to be sections of this video, but I want to break down and kind of mention that all three of these kind of come back to a centralized point about why the engineer squad is good, and that is versatility. Okay? The engineer is not as flashy as the assault squad. They don't have the raw firepower of a tank or a plane, and they certainly don't have the long range capabilities that something like a sniper squad might have. But what they do have is raw versatility. You can bring an engineer in your lineup and you will never be disappointed by it. You can bring an engineer in any circumstance against any enemy target and you will be able to engage them just fine. And that's really the power of the engineer. You never have to worry that you're going to be running into something you can't deal with. You don't have to worry about the fact that you're using a PPSH or something like that and getting sniped uh, at a distance where you're not able to fight back. The engineer can fight any target at any distance with a reasonable amount of effectiveness and not have to worry about it. And that is really what makes the engineer such a powerhouse of a class. You can just do anything and everything. So guys, let's jump into the first part of what makes the engineer class so good, and that's its deployables. Now, the engineer squad has access to the exact same deployables that the engineer class has access to. Sandbags, barbed wire, rally points, ammo boxes, you name it. These are all things you should be building as your engineer squad in the same way that you should build them when you're using an assault squad or something like that. But the engineer squad has access to three special deployables that other squads do not have access to and other engineers in other squads do not have access to. And that is the AT gun, the machine gun nest for engineer twos, and of course, the anti-air gun. And these are all purpose-made deployables for dealing with a specific threat. The machine gun nest excels at taking out enemy infantry. The anti-air gun, of course, is good against anti or uh, good at anti-air duties. And of course, the anti-tank gun is good at anti-tank duties. The anti-tank gun also has the capability of fighting enemy infantry, but it's not nearly as effective. Now, when you're using these deployables, they are purpose-built for going up against the target that they are made for, okay? You shouldn't be using an anti-air gun to try to fight enemy infantry. In fact, since the recent nerfs, you really can't. Anti-tank guns aren't really that effective against enemy infantry. And of course, an enemy tank is going to laugh at you and then shoot you with the cannon if you shoot it with a machine gun. But when you use these in the right way, they become absolute powerhouses that can lock down areas of the map. When you're using these, you have to use them in the correct way Otherwise, their effectiveness drastically drops. So when you're using your machine guns, make sure you're building them in tight corridors. They cannot look to the left and the right very much. So building them in an open field is honestly a waste of time. You're going to get flanked and you're going to get killed. You should be building these in long hallways, watching one entrance and cutting off that entrance from the enemy. This is great in Berlin and other maps that are very claustrophobic, okay? But building it in a field in Normandy is going to be a recipe for just getting your head blown off by a sniper or getting flanked out by a tank or something like that. On the flip side, remember that anti-tank guns have massive uh, arcs of fire. They can fire in a huge AOE and they can even be moved. So building this in an open field is a great idea. You're protected from enemy fire and you're going to be able to lock down enemy tanks because most of the time enemy tanks are not really going to be looking for anti-tank guns. So it's a pretty easy ambush tactic. So just keep that in mind. For anti-air guns, make sure you're not building these um, around buildings that are going to obstruct your, obstruct your line of fire and be careful building them too high up. They can't look down and they have very poor depression 
when it comes to uh, shooting at enemy aircraft. So if you build it too high up on a hill, you're going to struggle at shooting enemy aircraft and good pilots will know to fly low to avoid your shots. So guys, the bottom line here with these deployables is that they're very, very powerful when used in tandem um, with each other. It's very common for me to build an anti-tank gun and then an anti-air gun next to it and a machine gun nest over off to the side, right? They're good when they protect each other. A machine gun nest isn't going to do anything against an enemy tank, right? And, you know, it, an anti-tank gun is just going to end up getting bombed out by an enemy plane. So use them together. Jump from one to the other and take down enemy vehicles. Call out to your team. If you're playing in a squad, make sure you know um, if, you're, if your friend ends up building an anti-tank gun, call out to them. Say, hey man, I built an anti-tank gun over here. Jump on it, protect this area. Or I have a machine gun nest here. I'll take down this plane, you use this machine gun. I've had a lot of success in uh, many games of just building some anti-tank guns or building a machine gun nest and then running away from it. Being a normal squad while my teammates utilize those tools later on. An anti-tank gun watching a road may not have a use right now if, there, if there's no tanks, but an enemy tank might end up rolling down that later on. And I can guarantee you that your teammate is going to be very thankful for it when that tank does show up. Now, you might be assuming that, hey, since they have these really powerful deployables, they must lack combat capabilities with their primary weapons. And you'd be sort of right, but they're no slouch in combat for sure. Now, the engineers have access to three different kinds of rifles. They have semi-automatic rifles, uh, bolt-action rifles, and select-fire rifles. Now, semi-automatic and bolt-action rifles are solid weapons. Um, they lack the firepower of a PPSH or an MG42, but they get the job done, okay? If you get the first shot off and you hit your shot before that PPSH user is able to gun you down, then you're going to be winning that fight because these weapons hit hard, okay? But again, they lack the firepower, but the engineer has a trick up their sleeve. They have access to the select fire rifles in Enlisted. These are the FG-42s, the AVTs, the M2 carbines, and these weapons are some of the best guns in Enlisted. And they have one big downside, ammo capacity. They have very limited amounts of ammo. For example, the FG-42 only carries one spare magazine. However, the engineer can just build ammo boxes. And so when you combine the ability to build an ammo box and bring an FG-42, suddenly the engineer becomes a very powerful unit. They become an absolute powerhouse on the battlefield where they can bring these select fire rifle weapons that are fully automatic and you can take on PPSH users, you can take on these assault squads, you can take on LMG squads and come out on top every time. They are very powerful and that is why the engineer weapons are very, very good, guys. And it's one of the big reasons why the engineer squad is one of the most powerful combat squads in all of Enlisted. Now, for their final trick, guys, perks. The Enlisted Engineer has an amazing perk distribution with plus two vitality and plus one mobility. This means that no matter what, the Enlisted Engineer is going to be able to to get bonus vitality, which is the most important perk in Enlisted. It makes you survive more shots. It makes you survive semi-automatic rifle shots. Um, and it is overall just a massive increase to your effectiveness as a soldier in Enlisted. So guys, engineers are always able to get this. If you just rank an engineer up to rank five, he will be able to unlock the bonus vitality perk. And that is a huge Boon. Assaulters do not have this, at least not until Assaulter 2, which is a significantly more um, investment for Bronze Order. So guys, if you are a new player and you're looking for a soldier to level up and you're not really sure who to max out, who to make your rank 5 soldiers, engineers. Rank up your engineers as soon as you can because you don't have to worry about re-rolling them. You don't have to worry about getting more so you can get the better perks. Go for these guys. Your engineers will always, always have the perfect point distribution to get whatever perks you need to get. You can always get reduced uh, recoil. You can always get bonus vitality and you can always get things like med kit use speed or build speed. So very, very powerful in that regard as well. And it's again, it's why good players like to use engineers because you don't have to worry about it. You just get to get the good perks and you get to level them up. No bullshit, no messing around with that. Gaming on a budget, guys. But that is it, everybody. Those are the biggest things about the engineer class, and it's why the engineer class is one of my favorite classes in the game, and it's why it is such a powerhouse class in Enlisted. 
you can run three engineer squads and you will be able to do some serious damage in enlisted especially if you have things like the fg42 or the avt so guys if you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you out remember as always like comment and subscribe i do appreciate it it helps me out a ton uh, more than you guys realize and make sure to just come join us in discord join us for some uh friday fight nights and enlisted join us for some uh some party games that we do on saturdays i'd love to have you guys in the discord i'd love to have you guys over at twitch.tv slash hey quadro but guys that's it for me thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time take it easy